Hello everyone, my name is Onisi Adams and I've been working on this project this summer with my advisor Brett Seymour and my lab mates uh, Kate, Katie, and Rachel. Okay, so what I looked at for my project is the implications of prey density on the prey capture rate of wolf spiders and how does the availability or the number of prey present how does that affect the rate at which the spider is able to capture its prey? Okay, so okay, so why are we interested in the foraging behavior of wolf spiders? Okay, so wolf spiders are known to be ground hunters and they are largely consumers of insects. And these are um, like insects including household insects and insects that can be pests in a household and also in um, agricultural fields. So this is like one of the reasons why we're interested in wolf spiders. And um, wolf spiders are very beneficial in keeping insect populations balanced. And we know that insects are present in large populations and in a lot of different habitats and spiders are also present in most of these habitats as well. Mm. And the understanding the ability of wolf spiders to control insects is very beneficial to human populations. Okay, so it is important for us to understand how wolf spiders interact with their prey and are able to successfully sustain themselves and their entire ecological communities. Okay, so for our study, it was observed that like just looking at wolf spider functional responses and foraging behavior, we noted like a lot of different factors that tend to affect this and this includes like factors like abiotic factors and also biotic factors. So like the, um, the presence of like the relationship between the predator and the prey, like those can be considered as biotic factors and abiotic factors like temperature, different light environments, light pollution, a whole lot of different factors that affect foraging behavior. Okay, so we observed like many of these factors. So we hypothesized that prey density could be a determining factor of the prey capture rate or how fast the spider is able to detect and successfully capture its prey. So we predicted that wolf spiders would take shorter amounts of time to capture their first and second fly. In this case, we used fruit flies for, to, um, to set up our foraging experiments. So we predicted that the spiders would take a shorter, uh, sorry about that, would take shorter amounts of time to capture their first and second fly as the prey density increased. So here you can see on this graph, the, um, it is showing that prey capture, time for prey capture is increasing. Like, prey capture time is increasing as, I'm sorry, I think it should be the other way. Um, You're right there, Anisia. So, but it's just prey capture time decreases as prey density increases. Yes, yeah, okay, so the graph is showing like the slope of the line going downward. So as prey density increases, the prey capture time was expected to decrease. Okay, so our experiment trials. So this is how we ran our experiments. We randomly selected 56 wolf spiders to participate in these foraging trials and um, we used different prey densities or different number of fruit flies and these numbers were two, three, four, six, nine, twenty, thirty, and forty fruit flies. And we placed the spider in an arena. You can see an image of a spider here in an arena and we placed a different number of flies in the arena with them and then we recorded what the spider did for 30 minutes for each spider. Okay, so how our data was processed. So these videos were evaluated and I recorded the time that the spider captured its first fly and its second fly. So those data were recorded and then they were collected and compiled in an Excel sheet and they were analyzed in our studio. And we created box and whisker plots 
to show the relationships between the fly density and the time of the first and second fly capture. Okay, so for our results. So the first capture time was not heavily influenced by pre-density. These are our findings. So here you can see the graph and I say that no apparent trend was observed with these data because looking at the different box plots, they are just, they're kind of random. So looking at the relationship between fly density and first capture time, it appears to be an insignificant relationship. And the average time taken for first capture is relatively the same for prey densities from six through 40. So you can see the averages for these densities are like in the same area. So there's not much difference from uh, prey densities six through 40. And there is also a lot of variance among the first captured times for most of the fly density groups. So basically individual spiders, the time that they took to make their first capture just varied a lot by individuals. And this means that there was a lot of individual determination for first capture time. Okay, so we also looked at the differences um, the relationship between prey density and the first capture time by sex, looking at the differences between males and females, and we found that no differences were observed between the sexes. So when comparing the differences, no observable trend was noticed between males and females. Okay, so to note, we also did not have an equal distribution of female and male spiders because they were randomly selected. So in some cases, the data may not be truly representative of the differences between males and females. So, but in one case, for the fly density group three, there was an equal number of male and female spiders, and the graph shows that there was no significant differences due to sex. Okay, so looking at the second capture time, which is another data set that we, cre that we um, captured. So the second capture time, was shown to influence prey density. So if you look at this graph, you can see the smaller prey densities, like around two and three. The, um, the second capture time ranges all the way up past 800 seconds. And looking at prey densities from four through 40, there is a dramatic decrease in the amount of time that the spider took to make its second fly capture. Okay, so the variance within these density groups shows a general decrease with increasing fly density. This means that fly density was a major determining factor in second capture time. And that's, this also shows that the prey, fly density does affect the rate of, um, does affect the rate of prey capture. So the relationship between fly density and second capture time seems to be a more accurate representation of our prediction. Okay, so this graph is the comparison by sex for the second prey capture time, and this also shows that there are not much differences due to sex. So there, yes, also noting that there, in some cases, the, um, the males and females were not the same number used in the trials. But in one case, for the fly density group three, you can see that there, um, there was an equal number of male and female spiders, and the graph shows that males generally took less time for second capture than females. Okay, so what do our results mean? So the time taken for the first prey capture may not be useful in observing the relationship between prey density and capture rate. So we noticed that, um, yes, so that's one thing to note. And observations made during experiments showed a common time gap before spiders began hunting. This could possibly be attributed to spider acclimation to the arena being enclosed. So, um, like when we put these spiders in these arenas, this was like a change of environment. And when we started the trial, they did not like immediately start capturing their prey. So there was a very long delay. 
So that's something to note. And once the spiders did begin hunting, the time taken for prey capture could be linked to prey density, as shown in the second prey capture graph. And further experiment trials with a greater sample size may be needed for a conclusive result. So in conclusion, the results obtained confirms that there is a relationship between prey density and prey capture rate, and this is important to understand the rate at which wolf spiders are able to control prey densities in their habitats. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so that was great. Like you put up that first one with the first trial and how long it took them to catch the prey. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I hope the second one is better than it did. And so that was awesome. Yeah. I love it. Thank so, you. Anyway, so just, to, just so I'm clear, was it so like in your first trial, um, let's say you, you had three flies, and then in your second trial where you had three flies, in the first trial, was it, it just took them longer to get started than the second trial, or was it that it took them longer to actually, like they both got started at the same time, but in the first trial, did it just take them longer to catch the flies? Yes, yeah, so not the, they were all the same trial, but the time that they took to catch the first fly was really long for most of them. Right, but they, so compared to the second trial, was mm -hmm. it long though because it just took them a long time to get started? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. But it's the same trial, it's just the second spot. Yeah. Know, the second fly. The second oh, fly that they caught. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, I got it. But you're, you're right on the, mm -hmm. the nail there in that most of these spiders, when you first put them in there, they're just hanging out. Like they don't move, they're freaked out. Right. Right. And they just sit there for like five minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as they grab one, then they start going. Yeah. Yeah. So did you find, um, did you find that different spiders, and I'm sort of, I'm, I'm anthropomorphizing here, but did you maybe, but did you find that like different spiders had different personalities? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, this oh, is yes. just like your gut. Yes, yes, I'm, yes like, I know. Looking like them, looking like, back at the video, some of the spiders were mainly focused on escaping the arena. So <laughs> that affected like looking yeah. at how they captured prey. So yeah, some yeah. of them were, were special. Yeah, and some of them just around. sat in one position for the entire 30 minutes. Right. Yeah, because I know when I watch like individual, so I study fish, and yes. when I watch individual fish, like some of them you're like, there's a competitor, and the other one you're like, no. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> yes? So, um, does it matter how hungry they were to start out? Or I, I would imagine that if you just pick them randomly, some had just had lunch and some didn't, and then you stick them in this, yeah. in, in your experiment. No, we fed Don't them all Don't answer that question. This. Don't answer it. Oh. Kate, Kate will talk more about that. Oh, so okay. that's a great question. <laughs> and that could lead us right into Kate's talk. Okay, then. So if there's any other any more questions? questions? I might be anthropomorphizing this, but what is that spider doing? Looks like synchronized <laughs> swimming or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching a lot I of call that a so. spider model because I just like captured it and it's like, they're just sticking it What's up. What's it doing? It looks like a model to me. Is it alive? Yeah. Is it just drinking or something? Um, it was actually eating. Like yeah. I have a video of that spider just sitting there eating. Yeah, right. It's pretty bad. Just comfy. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So up next is Kate. Thank you.